Today is all about cataract surgery. So we're actually gonna drive out to Suncoast Specialty Surgery Center where we're gonna meet Dr. Rowan and he's gonna tell us all things cataract surgery related. So today let's focus on cataract surgery. All right, so we made it. Now we're back with Dr. Rowan. Welcome, yeah. BJ. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah. How did you become an ophthalmologist and how did you decide that cataract was your, your route for ophthalmology? Right, that's a great question. Uh, simply, my father was an eye surgeon. So that was a lot of fun. I saw his, his lifestyle and his life and uh, just enjoyed his work. And I think even since I was a little kid, I said I definitely want to be a surgeon. And then to answer the question, you said, why I, why cataract surgery? Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, we do a lot of surgery. I was actually considering retina for a while and then opportunities change. And so mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying cataract surgery. When I started optometry school, for me, the side of surgery just scared the heck out of me as far as the stressful side. Mm. So I appreciate people like you who said, nah, that doesn't bother me one bit. And so when I take care of my patients, I know that I have good people like you in my oh. area that I, can trust that if I send them to you, they're in good hands and when they come back, they're doing better than ever. So I do appreciate that. I appreciate that, yeah. I, I like surgery, surgery's fun. I, for me, I feel lucky doing it. I feel like, uh, you know, like the fighter pilots, you see them go over and you're jealous and they get to do the, mm -hmm. man, I wanna do that and I always wanna do surgery. So when right. I'm in the OR, I, every day I feel privileged. Like it's just, a, it's actually fun. So I've already done the video about what a cataract is and what life looks like after surgery. And if you do want to see that video, it is in the link above or in the show notes below. So today is all about cataract surgery itself. So I want to start from the beginning. I have a patient that I believe it's time for them to get cataract surgery. And so I send them to you to confirm that this is true. So what are the things that you're looking for to say this patient definitely needs cataract surgery? Yeah, so this happens a lot, right? Dr. Shania will send me a patient and say, hey, Dr. Shania thinks it's time for cataract surgery, can't get our vision much better, and the patient has to have a complaint and, and be um, struggling with their vision, whether it's near, far, glare. And we, we take Dr. Shania's notes and look, see what we can do as far as vision. Um, and we start there in the clinic and talk to the patient, say, okay, I still have to do a full exam and make sure that there's no other pathology that I think is going on with the retina, the macula, the optic nerve, the cornea. And then we say, yes, I agree with Dr. Shania. It is a cataract. Are you ready for surgery? Because it is elective surgery. Mm -hmm. And the patients are saying, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. I can't see, drive, cook, clean. You know, the, uh, the sports score, the weather channel, picking up the kids from soccer practice at night. Now, uh, something that you said that I want to bring up to the viewers also is that you, you mentioned elective surgery. So I have so many patients who say year after year, I, I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready for it. And you know, you're getting to that point where you're, at, you're almost at the point that you're not even legal to drive anymore because you're waiting so long. So how do you help that patient take that next step? Because I'll, I'll, sometimes to help them for me to take that next step to do surgery, I'll say, well, how about this? I'm not gonna send you to a cataract specialist to do the surgery. I'm just gonna send you for a consult. Right. And hear them out, see what they have to say. And if you decide I'm not ready, then don't do it. And if you decide, okay, I think I'm comfortable. So after I tell them that and they come see you and you know that they're on the fence, what is, what is the way that you can talk to them about, you know, this is something that, you know, as far as your quality of life, this right. is what we're looking. So what, what, what's your- That's an awesome question, right? Because that is, that's a lot. Whether We all carry some amount of fear, mm -hmm. um, some us more than others. And, uh, and fear is good. It is surgery, surgery on your eye, and there are risks. And so I tell people who, who are really struggling, if they say, I don't want it, good. It's elective, we'll see you next year. Dr. Shine will send you when you're ready and, and nice to meet you. And you know, uh, we also do a couple things that help is just meeting the surgeon. Okay, he's not a total weirdo or a jerk or something. <laughs> right. And then actually just tell them the facts about how long it takes. It's a seven minute procedure. You're not put to sleep. You know, uh, some of those mysteries that they don't maybe know. And that helps them. But even finally, you come to the point where patients say, so I'm still very scared. Well, we're certainly not going to talk them into it. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, finally, I say, I tell patients, if this is something that bothers you on a day to day to day basis, you know, you're trying to, the sixes and the threes are getting weird on your calculations and the texting stuff, you can't see the golf ball and you know you used to see that, you know, pen down there or driving at night is becoming 
a relationship that's actually affecting your life. And you mm-hmm. quit going out to church, and you quit going to you know, and you quit going to dinner because you're actually afraid on a day-to-day basis. Well, that would be if you were my aunt or uncle. I'd say I would really consider it. If it's not bothering you, and someone else told you I have cataract and you don't care, then good, leave it alone. It's not cancer, it's not a tumor. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna hurt you to leave it one year, two years. That There's a caveat, right? If we leave them way too long, right. then they can cause some trouble, but that's, mm-hmm. that's rare. Okay, so, good. Yeah, I try not to lead with the, the fear. If you yeah. wait too long, you may take this 10 minute surgery, turn it into a, a much longer, and you know, I try not to lead with that, right? but sometimes, some people just need that push to finally, and I'll tell you how many patients come up to me after surgery mm-hmm. saying, man, I don't know why I waited so long. Yeah. This is amazing. Tell us a little bit more about how you figure out that power between uh, their old prescription, the shape of their eye and everything. Tell us about how you figure out this should be perfect for them. Right, and that is, and it's highly detailed, right? Yeah. It's We're talking optics and so, if someone comes in from you and they have a prescription that they're wearing and then they have the new prescription because we could change it mm-hmm. and then we get an a scan and the a scan tells us a whole different story and those stories have to add up and so i have to lay it all out on the computer and then we print it all out and i do look at the patient how they are what their curvature of their cornea is and you're right i have to put all these mm-hmm. formulas together and the computer does some decisions for me, but ultimately we have to make that. Right. And you know, you'll send some patients over and they say, hey, this, this person really you know, plays a lot of piano and works a lot up close, so mm-hmm. let's make sure we're working close, or vice versa, they're a golfer and they're really concerned about distance. So, right. so it's a great question. It's, um, it's a lot and we're calculating all the way up until the end. So tell me all the options that you can choose. If, uh, if you patient does say, I went far away, up close, uh, we didn't mention monovision, and monovision, again, we do this in context as well, where one eye is tailored for distance, one eye is tailored for up close. We usually try to keep the dominant eye for distance. Um, now, um, I know there's also other options other than just far away, up close, and monovision, mm-hmm. like multifocals. Um, how do you base what patient would be good for what? So, if someone's already mono, mm-hmm. I'll really try to keep them mono. They've been happy, it's worked well for them, they live to be 100 years old, they can text and see the food on their plate and see you know, TV and walk and talk and do that. So let's keep them in that. And their brains adapted well to that. So, mm-hmm. so keep them there. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't put someone in it too much. Mm-hmm. And then we go, as you said, to those multifocals, which are yeah. in, in plain English are awesome. They're, okay. they're awesome. amazing. I put them in my mother. Mm-hmm. She's got, and she's now 2020 near and far. That's she awesome. can cook and clean and read and drive and text and yeah. pick the kids up from soccer practice and just happy. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are pretty amazing lenses. There are uh, limitations, of course. Some people are just not candidates for those multifocal lenses. Right. Any sort of macular disease process, epiretinal membranes, mm-hmm. macular degeneration. It's not that the lenses wouldn't work; they still would. But you're, it's. Yeah, I tell people it's like uh, it's like driving a Ferrari down a bumpy road. Mm. It you'd rather not. Give me a nice, steady pickup truck, mm-hmm. you're gonna be real happy because your road is bumpy and you, you overdid it. You put a fancy road in there and it's just, it doesn't work well. The brain's not happy. And then finally is the, the finances, they cost extra. Mm-hmm. So for some folks, it's just, you know, a burden. All right, so now I have those patients who come back to me and say their vision isn't exactly what they expected. They had that friend who could see perfect 2020 and, or at least they have a bunch of friends that they talk to that they could see perfect out of cataract surgery. So why aren't they the one that right. can't see it? Yeah. What did they do wrong? That's frustrating. It's scary and frustrating. And uh, so for the patient, well, a lot of things. One is um, don't believe everything you hear but, <laughs> for stars. Yeah. But, uh, and even within patients, we'll do one eye and we'll do another. And they'll say, hey doc, I was 20-20 that next day and this one, I'm kind of blurry. And right. you know, they just had surgery 24 hours ago. So there's that. And then as you're talking about now we've healed mm-hmm. a week or two down the line, inflammation's gone and they're still not where they want to be or expected or hoped or planned to be. And uh, it's, a, it's a very important point. Statistically, not everybody's 20-20 after cataract surgery. Mm-hmm. And I would go to the very beginning and reassure us that for starters, we did this surgery because you had a cataract mm-hmm. and you couldn't see and it was blocked and Dr. Schneider tried to give you glasses. It wasn't breaking through. Now we are 2020 or close to with mm-hmm. glasses. 
I know your friend down the street got it without. And there are just so many bio variabilities, right? Mm -hmm. So where the lens sits in the eye, where it settles down to even a half millimeter makes a one diopter difference or a third of a millimeter. Um, and then is there astigmatism? Did we treat that astigmatism? So that's um, something that people need to go in ahead of time saying, mm -hmm. look, not everybody's 2020. And that's why we try to go to these even mm -hmm. fancier lens. We use a laser now, right. right? The laser measures intraoperatively to be even more precise and just get that number closer to perfection. Mm -hmm. This is, hey, you have more astigmatism than we thought. You have um, the astigmatism axis is different than we thought. We do that mm -hmm. right here on the table. The patient's awake and the laser does its thing. And then as we put the lens in, the laser guides us. But even with Mm -hmm. Laser assisted cataract surgery, we don't get 100% of people getting 20 20 vision. It's just a fact. The eye heals how it wants to heal. Heals how it wants to heal. Inflammation, even is perfect, mm -hmm. right? And you achieve 20 20. So that is a, uh, it's a great question. I hope that's the answer. It's just that everybody's different. And I, I should reiterate, in, it's actually not the goal at all for, we we'll say no one's guaranteed 20 20. Right we're getting rid of the cataract. And so mm -hmm. it's just been awesome that in the last 20 years, we've right. titrated this surgery so much that we're achieving it. But the numbers, let's say it's 82% are getting at or near 20, 40 mm -hmm. without correction. That's yeah, great, that's eight awesome. out of 10, that's awesome. But two out of 10 are not. Right. And they're still doing great. And if we put them all together, 99.9 .9 are mm -hmm. getting excellent vision with without glasses. So you had mentioned the laser that, that we do. So my next question is kind of going into that. We didn't have laser for, we haven't had laser for too long. So what's that difference between cataract surgery from 20 years ago compared to now? Because a lot of my hesitation on patients that I have that want to, that need surgery and not sure if they're ready for it, is that they said, well, they remember when their grandma had the surgery and it was such a terrible experience that She's, they're scared that they're gonna go through that same thing. So what does that difference look like? I mean, it's, it's a big difference from 1955, 65, where it was sandbags around the head and even bedpans, mm. right? Wow. People yeah. were, after cataract surgery, had to hold still, they took the whole capsule out and the vitreous surgery. So that was really right. tough. Um, then the Mr. Magoo glasses after, <laughs> because mm -hmm. there were no implants. Mm. 70s and 80s really made the big change. And, and now, as you alluded to, in the last 15 or, well, 20 plus years, yeah. Um, lasers come on, but um, the answer is, you know, it's the it's the most common performed surgery in the United States, mm -hmm. and statistically, I think it's one of the safest. So it's the most and safest, mm -hmm. and it's you know anywhere from a four to a seven minute procedure. No right. blood, no stitch, no patch, right. um, no restrictions. You can go golf the next day. You can pick up that big heavy bag of dog food, you know, all the things you've been told by that same neighbor who told you <laughs> what to do. Now, I know there's times where we'll have an option for a patient, whether they can use the, the laser or the femtosecond laser mm -hmm. versus not. And some of that has to do with costs. And, um, but I would say as far as on my side, when I see a patient back after the surgery doing their post-op, most of the time I can't tell. I can tell that there was some laser marks there, but mm -hmm. as far as the vision and how the patient's feeling and what they see afterwards, that's all about the same for me. So right. how do you um, how do you decide on which one's gonna be best for that patient? That's really good. And this is where my opinion comes in, hopefully with yeah. some evidence-based medicine fact. But so let's talk about two different lasers now for cataract surgery. One's the femtosecond you alluded to, and one's the aura. Mm -hmm. And they're both lasers and they both happen during the surgery. And I really don't have much faith in the first. Okay. It doesn't change patient outcomes. Mm -hmm. All you're doing with that first laser is making an incision. Right. You can also make an incision on the cataract, mm -hmm. an incision on the capsule, but it, and it does some things, so it sounds pretty cool. Yeah. But it doesn't change the ultimate outcome for the patient. Right. The other laser, actually does something and that mm -hmm. is we take the cataract out in the middle of the case we've already measured you with that a scan in the office we already know exactly when we have the calculations we have the lens room we have 5,000 lenses here in the back but we redo it on the table in right. so the cataract's been removed the eyes filled the patient's awake and then we turn the laser on mm -hmm. and laser remeasures and now it's a different measurement because the cataract's been removed right and that's been throwing us off just ever so slightly mm -hmm. and the laser measures 40 times in one second. Mm -hmm. And it, as I said, also measures that corneal astigmatism, the curvature. So, well, it wasn't quite here, it's over here a little bit. Right. So then I'll change my calculations on the computer right then and there, 
get the lens that actually matches your eye. Then as we put it in the eye, mm -hmm. here comes more laser. The laser's turned back on again. And the laser, just like, it looks like um, fighter pilot, where you're trying to you know, line up that missile strike, mm -hmm. the laser goes and then we get locked on, it beeps. And mm -hmm. we know I put the lens exactly correctly to the nth degree position, centration mm -hmm. end. So that really makes a difference. And okay. that's that 2040 to 2030 or 2030 right. to 2020. Yeah. It, is, it is sharp. So we know that cataract surgery is one of the safest surgeries out there, but there are other complications. So how often do you see complications nowadays? And how easily is it reversed? Yeah, there is a risk. It is surgery. We're cutting on and into the eye. Mm -hmm. And so the risks include everything, you know, from pain and scratching, bleeding, hemorrhage, retinal tear, retinal detachment, loss of vision, even loss of the eye, even death, mm -hmm. right? We're on the operating room. Now, we don't put anybody to sleep nowadays. We don't change your heart rate. Um, so there's really not much that can induce the death issue other than you are sedating. But those, all those risks are out there. They're reality and in the age group in which we're working, you know, that's a higher risk category. Statistically, mm -hmm. it is a very safe surgery, 99.9 .9 plus percent. To answer the question, what do we do? Well, these things can happen. Most of those that I mentioned, bleeding, infection, tears, attachments, um, misplacement of lens, lost lens, can all be fixed. Right, and, and so you can say, well, that was terrible, but we're gonna fix it. We're gonna do more surgery, we're gonna remove that, we're gonna use some medications. You know, that really brings that risk is already small, and then it gets even smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, and which is why we come back full circle to people have fears, um, as they should. Mm -hmm. And um, you say, well, at some point, your fear is outweighed by your reality. So you have mentioned that we don't put anybody to sleep but I've had patients like, if they don't put me to sleep, I'm not doing it. So how do you get right. that person who just like, how can you keep me awake and I be comfortable enough to go through that? Because I know myself and anyone gets close to my eyes, I'm gonna hit them, right. you know? So how do you make them feel like you're gonna right. be okay? And it's great because patients are scared either way. They said, don't, don't knock me out, that really scares me, mm -hmm. or you better get me sedated <laughs> or I'm not gonna do this. Right. And the answer is it's full spectrum. We mostly don't put you to sleep, mm -hmm. but we certainly can put folks to sleep. I mean, particularly if we have patients who, have, uh, who are blind, who cannot see at all, and they maybe have mental issues, mm -hmm. and now their, their life just got worse, we wanna help them see so they can enjoy life. So those folks are put to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, I have a patient I'm doing next week and she knows she's scared. So I wrote her a prescription for Xanax. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna take that when she comes in here before she comes in. Then she asked that she be sedated before she even entered this room. So we're gonna do that. The yeah. anesthetist will meet her out in the pre-op pre area. Mm -hmm. She'll get a light dose of medication to make her calm. Mm -hmm. She didn't want people touch her face. She said the, the paint and the, the drapery is really gonna throw her off and her claustrophobia. Mm -hmm. So then she'll be fully monitored here on the table mm -hmm. with her heart rate, breathing all monitored, and then she'll get more sedation. Okay. And then finally, in the middle of the case, if someone is very agitated, scared, we'll go more. Mm -hmm. And so you can run okay. the full spectrum from, I had a gentleman yesterday, he wanted no sedation at all. <laughs> wow. I put some drops in his oh, eyes. Rambo. He sat back, we did a surgery, he sat up, he wanted to drive home, he drove home. Wow. So so you can go from zero to fully knocked out. That's awesome. Yeah. So you can tailor it for, for the person. Totally. So next question is, how quickly will I recover that vision? Oh, great. Um, <laughs> the I would tell you that you are legal and ready to do anything you want that very day. You got to dinner that night, you have no restrictions. Okay. Your, some people come in the next day, we see everybody day one. Um, some people are 20-20, right on box and some people are very blurry. Most everyone, the vast majority within 24 to 72 hours are gonna see real nice clear vision. So with that healing process, another question that I get often is, how much pain am I gonna feel you know, during the surgery, after the surgery, and when will that irritation or pain go away? It doesn't hurt me at all. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> there is Let's say no pain. Yeah. There's some pressure during surgery. Okay. My hand near your face, and that can be uh, discomforting or alarming to the patient. If that's so, again, we'll go back to more anesthesia and just put the patient so they feel nothing. Mm -hmm. As actual pain, there should be none during or after. There would be scratching, which I guess is pain on the mm -hmm. scale. So some people complain of a dryness, an irritation. You're, you are cut, 
whether you use a laser or a blade or a diamond blade, we still have to get into the eye. Mm -hmm. And so it leaves a, about a two millimeter incision. It feels like a foreign body sensation. And actually that can get worse a couple days later. Mm -hmm. So people feel nothing for a day or two. And right. then as it starts to heal, it's kind of like when you're a child and you skin your knee and scabs up. And then a week later, you're, you're scratching at it because it's healing. Mm -hmm. So some people complain of a foreign body sensation. Um, if you have any pain, consider pain something's wrong mm -hmm. and you should call your surgeon even at midnight and mm -hmm. that's what we're there to say hey something's not right probably the pressure's up mm -hmm. um, so it should be no pain is right. the answer i'll tell you most of the abrasions that i see are much larger much wider than the incisions that you would even get from cataract mm -hmm. surgery mm -hmm. and most of those patients you know they're they're fine the eye can take quite a bit of pain it is very sensitive it's one of the most sensitive parts of the body yeah. but uh you can take it isn't it amazing yeah it's amazing we can do that you and it's so fast to heal for that patient who says, I want to get a new lens, how is, is that something that would ever be um, feasible or is that something that you would have to do but for a specific situation? Short answer is yes, we, we can do and would change a lens. Mm -hmm. But rather not, especially mm -hmm. if the patient is seen very well with without glasses, say let's not go in that second time. First time it's all well designed, second time you're taking something out that doesn't want to come out. The, as you, you know, you alluded to, we've got to figure out the why. If the patient says, I'm not seeing right. as well as I want to, well now is it the lens or is it some other pathology? Right. You're just trading apples for apples. So. Right. Yeah, so how I like to end the discussion between us is go through a quick rapid fire question and okay. get to know you a little bit more, not just the surgery and all that, but just to kind of see who you are as a person. So, you ready? Ready, go shoot. All right. During cataract surgery, music or no music? Music for sure. And what do you normally listen to during surgery? Patient gets a choice on the way in. If they don't choose, then we go, it depends, country rock, blues, rhythm, reggae. Okay. Changes. Are you a big music trivia person or? Uh, no, try me. 80s, I'm good. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, shoes or no shoes? No shoes. No shoes. Uh, fun day on a boat or fun day on a golf course? Boat. boat. All right. How do you get to work? I ride my bike on surgery days. Ride your bike. Yeah. All right, man, I ride my bike to work. I'm gonna be pouring down sweat and take me a few patients to get back to. Okay. I have a shower here, whole setup. That's awesome. And it actually, when I ride a bike, it keeps me calmer and more smooth. It's calmer work, keeps nice. me more calm. Okay, last question. How do these good viewers find you on uh, social media or how can they learn more about you and your surgery center? Oh, thanks. I think we're on at rowaneyecenter.com. Okay. And then uh, that's about it. <laughs> Maybe some billboards out there, yeah. no room. You said you also have some YouTube videos? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and there are ways that people can actually watch the surgery if they feel like that's something that they would want to do. Right, we've got some surgeries uploaded there. So I just want to thank you for allowing us yeah. to come to the site and learn more about cataract surgery. And we'll definitely try to get you back another day to go into more uh, you know, topics of the eye. Because yeah. Dr. Rowan does specialize in more than just cataract surgery. So what other things do you specialize real quick? A lot of plastic surgery. Okay. Lefts lid lifts, brow lifts, cancer, skin cancer, reconstruction, perfect, after cancer. So we got a lot of other topics that we can talk about in other days, but I do appreciate you letting yeah, us come. You, and uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss any of our other videos. And don't forget that, to hit that little bell icon. You gotta say, stay well, stay, stay focused. Stay well, stay focused. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> see ya. All right. <laughs> Time to talk to patients. This is gonna be off, but I kind of talk to them that those friends that are talking to you about, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, it's kind of like the reviews that you see online, that five star, that one star, you're going to hear the loudest people, That's right. but they have thousands of people who go and see them every year. And you're looking at that 30 reviews on, at, on right. that website. Yeah. Um, so it helps, but you got to go and you just got to experience for yourself. That's true. Um, and also off, yeah. off script is uh, there's always one person in the neighborhood that's just, yeah. Geez. She's the bossy old thing, to everybody. <laughs> yeah. and it's not. You gotta take a grain of salt. So. We gotta put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>